Hi there. Uh, before I start today's video, I wanted to take a quick moment to thank every single person who's been supporting me, especially over the last couple of days since I spoke about my channel on social media. I am really, really humbled by what I am seeing. Uh, so thank you to each and every one of you. You know who you are and I promise to keep up uh, this work that I am doing. Thanks a lot. Pricing is also one of the pieces of marketing and it is a very, very important one. Pricing has a huge impact on the final purchase decision, especially at the moment of truth when the consumer has pretty much gone through the whole brand experience or probably if you are drawing a journey, the different stages of the journey and they are close to that moment of truth when they are about to make the purchase decision. And that's where pricing becomes extremely critical because the decision could go in the favor of your brand or someone else. I will not be talking about pricing from a strategy perspective, but only from the perspective of the key measures that you really need to know so that you are able to analyze and understand and then be able to take decisions around pricing. So let's get started with today's conversation around pricing. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. But with just a bit of help, it can be a lot of fun. On this channel, I simplify real-world marketing for all the curious minds out there. Hi, I'm Rahul and this is the business of marketing. If you're new to this channel, I strongly suggest that you hit the subscribe button now. And if you have any thoughts or comments that you would like to share with me, please drop them in the comment section below. The first measure that I will be talking about today is something that is most commonly known to uh, probably all of us and that is the retail price. Retail price is what the consumers pay at the retail store to purchase a product. It is not what the retailers pay to buy the product to the manufacturer. The retail price gets recorded when the purchase happens at the point of sale and when the barcode is being scanned by the retailer. If you are in marketing and buying uh, retail measurement data, then retail price is a piece of information that would be provided by those data providers. Why is retail price something that you are trying to find out through the data providers? Because uh, as a brand, aren't you the one who's supposed to determine the retail price? To understand the complexity of the answer, you need to understand what really happens in the real world. What would happen is that the product would move through a bunch of different stages before it actually gets to the retailer. So at different stages, different changes might happen to the pricing of the product. Sometimes there are distributors who are extremely powerful and they can really influence the price. At the same time, there could be retailers who are extremely powerful and they could influence the price. Their intention would be to try and sell as much as they can so that they can make the most amount of profit. So therefore, there is an influence that they have as far as the retail price is concerned. And which is why as a manufacturer or a marketer, you still need to find out what is the final retail price on ground. Although you might have had a retail price range in mind when you started. Of course, if you are someone who is doing business on e-commerce, this isn't something which influences your product sales so much. But even in the case of e-commerce, there can be situations where the marketplace is trying to promote your product or your brand. And in such cases, there could be a change wherein they apply certain promotions or discounts, which could influence the retail price of your product. But in such cases, the price is much more visible to you directly. The next measure that I will be talking about is called the average price per unit. The average price per unit is what the consumer pays for a single unit of the product. Now, when you say single unit, it could be a unit of one, a unit of three, a unit of 12 different products. But as long as these different products are all packed together as a single unit, that is considered as one SKU or sales uh, unit. To calculate average price per unit, you need to divide dollar sales or value sales by the total unit sales. There are two simple things to keep in mind when you want to use the average price per unit measure for analysis. The first thing is that uh, make sure that you're comparing uh, units of the same size. So an SKU which has one uh, piece of the product or one 
quantity of the product is being compared with another SKU which also has one unit or uh, one piece of the product. The second thing is if you are trying to understand the average price per unit for the overall category actually you will get a result but uh, that can be pretty misleading because in a category there are units of different uh, sizes and different quantities so it's not something which I would advise you to look at. To overcome this issue, I will be talking about the next measure which is known as the average price per volume. Average price per volume or price per volume is what the consumers actually pay for equivalized volume of the product that they buy. This is a measure which kind of takes care of the differences in sizes or quantities and units by reducing all of them to a common unit of measure such as liters or grams or, or something. To calculate the average price per volume, you need to divide the dollar sales or value sales by the total volume sales or equivalized sales. It is possible that you might be feeling a little confused by the terms that I am using over here like dollar sales, value sales, equivalized sales, volume sales and things like that. And if that is the case, I recommend uh, you watch my earlier video which is on the 8 sales measures. And once you have watched that video, it will be much easier for you to understand what I am talking about in this video. There is one thing to keep in mind when you are looking at average price per volume. And that is that while it is definitely a better measure when it comes to comparisons as well as getting an overall view of pricing for a brand or a category, sometimes this data might seem inflated. And this could be because of the fact that there are smaller pack sizes which are usually sold at a higher price. At the same time, they sell a lot more than the larger pack sizes. So the data might seem a little distorted. The next measure that I'll be talking about is what is known as the everyday price or the regular price or even sometimes referred to as the base price. The everyday price or regular price is what the consumers pay on a regular day when there is no promotion or merchandising activity or sale which is being applied to the product. This is a measure which is just as important for pricing as it is for promotion related conversations and uh, there is usually another measure which is what I'm going to talk about next which is known as the promoted price or the sale price which uh, is seen together with this measure. The promoted price is what the consumers pay when uh, any form of promotion or merchandising activity is running. It is possible that there is no reduction in price as a part of the promotion or sale and it could be other forms of promotion such as displays. However, the promotional price is still crucial as it can help us understand the impact of the sale or promotion. If you want to get a better sense of the kind of promotions that I am talking about, I recommend that you watch an earlier video on the different kinds of promotion. I will provide the links to these videos and do check them out and it will help you in understanding this pricing conversation better. The next measure that I will be talking about is uh, something that we all love and maybe a lot of marketers hate and that is discount. We know discounts, we understand discounts intuitively but uh, because they are so important both for consumers as well as for marketers, I am going to touch upon discounts uh, in today's topic. Discount is the actual or percentage of reduction in price to attract consumers to buy or to buy more of a certain product. Discount is usually shown in two different ways. The first is the absolute discount and the second being the percentage discount. To calculate absolute discount, you need to subtract the sale price or promoted price from the everyday price or regular price. And to calculate percentage discount, I put the formula up on the screen. Uh, it's something which we all probably already know. The last measure I wanted to talk about in today's video is known as price cap. Price cap is basically the difference between your price and the price of the competitor's products which is expressed either in absolute terms or in percentage terms. To calculate the absolute price cap, uh, you take the everyday price of your competitor's product and subtract it from the everyday price of your product and the difference is the price cap. When you have the absolute uh, price gap, you can use it to calculate the percentage price gap. The formula for that is uh, you take the absolute price gap divided by the everyday price of your product and multiply it by 100 to get the percentage price gap. There are two things to keep in mind when you are looking at price gap. The first is that price gap can be calculated and analyzed not just for everyday price but for all kinds of price. However, when you are trying to calculate price gap, just make sure that you are comparing the same measure for the same product size. The second thing which you should keep in mind is that price gap is something which is a very crucial part of the overall pricing strategy work. 
it is something where marketers usually try to maintain a certain price gap when compared to their competitors or to the category overall and this helps in uh, maintaining a price at a certain percentage above or below their competitors depending on whatever is the strategic intent behind uh, doing something like that. This brings me to the end of uh, today's video. I love sharing a single slide where all the information can be summarized and uh, here are the seven different measures in pricing which are extremely crucial. So if you keep an eye on this one slide, it will be good enough for you when it comes to all kinds of pricing uh, conversations. The information that I shared in today's video is important not only if you are someone who is a professional who is working in brand management in marketing teams or, or equivalent but this can also be useful to you if you are someone who is running your own business. I hope you liked today's video as well and if you did please hit the like button and if you have any thoughts or comments uh, please uh, share them in the comment section below and thank you once again for watching the business of marketing and I will see you again in my next video pretty soon.